Charles Allen's his name. He's the CEO of the company, and uh, and again, the stock symbol is BTCS. You can go to uh, their website, btcs.com, like we're showing there, to our 110 million broadcast homes uh, every weeknight. Charles, thanks for joining us, uh, and you got to enjoy some of the music here in the meantime. Uh, rather you know, nice to visit. Good to see you. Hey, yeah, talk to us. Me. Talk to you about the company. What are you guys up to? I want to. I want to hear about. Uh, I want to hear about this thing that you call digital currency. I am of the belief that we have been in a digital currency phase ever since Nixon uh, <laughs> took us off a of gold standard because I, I don't think any of us have any cash. I think it's all digital anyway. Is it not? Talk about talk about what you guys do and talk about the general state of this yeah, digital I mean, I think, economy. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the space because that, that's most interesting. And, and basically, we're focused on you know securing uh, blockchain infrastructure, next generation blockchains. And if you're not familiar with what a blockchain is, it's just a general ledger of who owns what. So. You know, if you love the internet, um, the internet moves information globally, uh, whether it's a PDF, your GPS coordinates, so you can get your Uber. Um, blockchains allow you to move digital assets globally without a trusted third party. So the internet moves information, blockchains move digital assets. And so we secure those networks that you can move assets on. And uh, I think it's pretty exciting, right? Bitcoin's one of them. You know, a lot of people have heard of that, obviously. Then you get into these other blockchains that not everyone's heard of, but really have the power to transform kind of how we interact as a society. Uh, and so that's that's what the company's focused on. I know that's kind of high level, uh, but we basically run the validator nodes, generate revenue by securing next generation blockchains that we think, you know, Web 3.0, the metaverse, and um, uh, you know, other other assets will get uh, will get settled and transacted on top of. So, so put that, that in layman, put that in the layman's terms. You say identify other blockchains. T tell me what that means specifically. So, so you, everyone's heard of Bitcoin, right? Like yeah. like that one. You know, everyone talks about the price going up, going down. Kind of irrelevant. Um, really, it's a Bitcoin's a great um, proof of concept that blockchains work, right? Where you can move a Bitcoin from one person to another across the world without a trusted third party. And that person on the other end knows they're getting a true and correct copy of that. Uh, you know, it's, it's an actual Bitcoin, right? They, it's, it's, uh, changed hands and it's on a public ledger. Um, when we talk about other blockchains, they have different purposes, right? So if you've heard about Ethereum, sure. it is a blo blockchain that was built to allow for the development of other applications on top of it, smart contracts. So, um, you know, let's get into the crazy here and let's start talking about an NFT, right? So an NFT, yeah, you can have Beeple's $70 million uh, piece of art that's sold, or you can have someone paying $3 million for a 20 by 20 pixel, you know, monkey smoking a cigar, which makes absolutely no sense. And I would be in the doghouse with my wife if I ever bought one of these. Glad I'm hearing somebody who's got, who's like really smart and really intelligent in this, actually say what we've all been thinking. So that's fantastic. Well, awesome. so, but, but th that's where you kind of have to stop and say, OK, this monkey smoking a cigar, I'm going to end up in a doghouse with my wife if I actually put that kind of money into yeah. something my daughter could grow, <laughs> right? But it is, the concept's really remarkable, right? Of, of It's just a unique digital asset you can move from one person to another and transfer ownership. There's lots of other examples where this can be done, which are going to make a lot more sense, right? And I'll yeah. touch on two, because I think they're, you know, when you start thinking about it in this light, you'd be like, oh, OK, that makes sense. Like. And I'll tell the first one in a story. So my youngest, uh, actually my oldest daughter's nine, and last year she's in the Nutcracker in, in the, the Philadelphia uh, Ballet, right? So like the real production, not like a, you know, a, a kid's thing. She's a, an angel. So we go to the show, and the, the night, before, like we had tickets, we bought two from the box office, four from, uh, my wife got from like StubHub. We're at dinner right before the show, and we only have two tickets in our possession. The four haven't been delivered. They're like, oh, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Literally, she's on the phone calling StubHub. Well, they never delivered the tickets. We ended up luckily finding two more from the oh. box office because a third party had bought all, a block of these tickets, right, and then resold them at a stuffed up value. I mean, these things were ridiculous. It's like opening night. But if that was done on a blockchain where the venue, the box office, right, sold the tickets on a blockchain, they could transfer you know, a million times, and whoever had that final copy mm -hmm. would show up, they'd have the QR code on their phone, it would be a true and correct copy because it's on a blockchain, it's an immutable ledger, right? And they would get into the show. And that transaction and settlement could happen in real time all over the world. Moreover, wow. if it's based on a smart contract, right, in this example, the box office could get a commission every time the thing trades. Right, like that's a new revenue. So, stream. is that the, is that the new model now, or is I mean, is that well, 
it, it's one example, right? Right. It's one example of of a way you can use blockchains um, today that makes sense, right? The reason you see these aren't using it is there is no secondary market for digital art. Like there is real no market for, for digital art, right? People create digital art and it gets copied, they're JPEGs, they move all around. And so now all of a sudden there's a, a mechanism for artists, or in this case brands, whether it's you know the NBA, to kind of monetize digital art and, and get it out there. I view the technology as something that can really transform the, the, the movement of assets on a global basis, right? Um, and that can be a lot of things. I give an example of tickets to a show. That's an yeah, right. example. Bitcoin is a currency, right? Or it's really more of a store of value. It's more like a digital gold because no one spends it because everyone thinks it's going to go up. So it's not really like, you know, no, no one's really buying stuff with Bitcoin. But there's a lot of other examples. Like, let's take securities, right? Like, there's no reason all securities shouldn't trade on a blockchain. I agree. Right? I, I don't think you should sell a car without the blockchain. You're taking out, you're going to save so much money, take out middlemen and so on and so forth. And by the way, there's no fraud involved suddenly if you're trading stocks and currencies on the blockchain. Isn't that accurate? It, it, exactly. I mean, here, here's a funny one. If anyone's seen, uh, um, what is it? Um, was it ga I think it's Gaming the System or, or you know, these, these the couple documentaries on uh, GameStop and AMC. And like literally, what happens in the stock market is, <clears throat> like for a company like ours, all of our shares get consolidated to a couple brokers. Like our biggest one is like TD Ameritrade. There's a couple others. These brokers can then take the shares and lend them out. Now investors, because settlements T plus two, all sorts of games can be played in that window, right? Yeah. You know, and it's it's a really I think uh, GameStop was one that really. Uh, showed the light of how the how, you know when you kind of pull the curtain back and look at look at how the pipes work, it's not really that good a system, right? Yeah, right. Where you can have phantom shares that don't exist trading. You can have, you know, um, you know, naked short selling when you look well, at it, which is called algorithmic trading these days, and that's basically counterfeiting shares. And here's what happens: is when you borrow shares, when when you borrow shares from another broker to to, to bet against them, and that you got to get them back to the other brokers. You know, if if you do a trade right now, you get your cash in two days. But broker to broker doesn't settle for 20 days. So there's this horrible thing called algorithmic trading where the shares never show up and it's just counterfeit. It used to be called the old naked short. Hey, listen, Charles, we're all out of time, but I want to have you back as a regular. You were fantastic. Uh, we didn't get a chance to even talk to you about your company much, but let's hit you back here in the next couple of weeks and get to do that. Uh, stock symbol BTCS, they are btcs.com uh, is the website. And of course, the name of the company, BTCS. Charles.